Hello and welcome to the couch. Today is a rainy day in the studio and I thought that it would be a good time to answer some questions. If you don't know me and you've never been here before, my name's Kristen. I am a professional artist and illustrator. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been doing this full time for about a year now. I sell prints, originals, stickers, and random goodies on my website. And then I also do in-person art markets and I have this YouTube channel. I love to watch YouTube or have YouTube playing while I'm working. And and I know a lot of other artists like to do that as well. So that's why we're here. Okay, so the first question is a tough one. It is, what would you say is your what for or motivation in your creativity? Like what is the steady thread that keeps you inspired and in committing to journeying as a professional artist? So I think there's kind of two parts to this question and that is what keeps me motivated to make art and then what keeps me motivated to do this as my job. I thought of some kind of like deep philosophical answers, sort of like artist statement type answers, but I think the real true answer is just that it brings me joy, it makes me happy to make art. I like doing it. <laughs> I just like making stuff. I have always made stuff and I will continue to make stuff. I have fully internalized that I am going to be an artist no matter what happens, whether it's my job or not, and that I've always been an artist. That keeps me inspired and motivated. I love how my art practice turns my brain on in a different way when I'm out in the world. I'm always thinking of like something that could be a painting or something that could be a cute illustration. And I think that keeps a sort of like humor and lightness to the way that I see the world. And I think you can see that in my artwork. I hope that you can. And then the commitment to journeying as a professional artist. If you don't know my whole art journey story there is a full video about it the first like minute of audio was really bad it's actually a fine video i might make another one we'll see so that video will be linked i I am 29 years old. I have worked a lot of different jobs in my life and I've worked a lot of jobs that I hated. I've worked a lot of jobs that I loved but didn't pay me very much. And this job right now at least happens to be something that I love doing and that I'm making a decent living at. And I wanna keep doing that for as long as I possibly can. The dread of having to find a corporate job or have a boss that isn't me is one of the main things that keeps me committed to being a full-time freelancer. Next question. Is is I'd love to know how the outdoors inspires you or inspires how you create. This person said, my inspiration tends to come from my imagination or cute animals or media I consume, but I'm so jealous of those who find inspiration from living life. I think it would teach me to be more present and appreciative of my surroundings instead of creating to escape it and your thoughts and tips. I'm also inspired by my imagination and cute animals and media too. Maybe instead of thinking of media and then the outdoors as a separate concept, think of nature as something something inherent that you are a part of. Like you are a part of nature just as much as the cute animals are. And so everything that you perceive and things that humans have made are also part of that. You don't have to make such a hard separation, I think there. Maybe like keep a little visual diary of things that you see or make notes of things that you see in your life. Take more walks, make more time to go outside in a kind of purposeless way. I think at least in the United States, we have a culture of like, everything has to be purposeful. Like you need to go on a hike in order to get to the top of a mountain or to reach some vista, but you can just like walk around a park. You can like walk into the woods, <laughs> you know, no matter where you live. I think there should be green space accessible to you. If not, the urban environment is built by humans, but can be inspiring too. So I guess my advice for this person would be to be inspired by what you're inspired by. Don't force it. But for me, the outdoors inspires me just like everything else does. Like I'm inspired by the colors that I see, by the shapes and shadows and light, little creatures and things. I don't necessarily go out into the world being like, I'm going to get inspired now. I kind of just try to organically let that inspiration come to me. And I think doing a lot of journaling and sketchbooking is really important, at least for me, to synthesizing that into art. How do you deal with art block or lack of motivation? I feel like everyone experiences art block really differently. I don't know that I consistently have problems with art block, but I do have problems with like motivating myself to make things. And I think 
the best way to do that is to pick something that is just like so low pressure to kind of get you in the mood or to get you set up for what you're about to do. So like if you really want to paint more, but you don't have the, the motivation or you don't feel like you have the time or the inspiration, maybe just like get out a piece of paper and some watercolor and just like mix colors. You don't have to make a painting or like if you want to draw more, just like draw circles on a sticky note or something. For me, that's like the hardest part. It's like get set up. And especially if I'm like, I'm going to make a big, a big painting and it's going to be a masterpiece, like that starting that process is really hard. I've gotten to a place where I'm like, I'm just going to mix colors that feels easy and attainable kind of no matter what my mindset is. So start small, I guess. How do you stay motivated with multiple projects going at the same time? I've kind of realized that I'm really motivated to finish things, which can be good and bad. I think it's harder for me to work on longer term projects because I kind of run out of steam for them. Like I really like finishing a sketchbook spread, taking a photo of it and like having it be finished all in one day. Like I get a little hit of dopamine when I'm done. I think my my brain just works well with like having multiple projects going at the same time. I get really bored easily and I hate being bored. So having multiple things going on is the way that I work. It might not be the way that you work though. Like you might want to start a project, work on it until it's completed and then start a new project. That's just not how I roll and everyone's different. This person said, when do you feel most creatively fulfilled? I was talking about this concept the other day and realized it's such a personal experience. I would agree that it is a very personal experience. I guess I feel most creatively fulfilled when I'm making stuff every single day. I know that for a lot of people that can lead to burnout or dissatisfaction. Um, yeah, so I guess when I'm making stuff every day is when I feel the best about my creative practice. Next questions are what artists inspire you and which artists do you look up to? I'm inspired by a lot of artists from like history people who are dead, like Frida Kahlo and Matisse and Hilma F. Clint and George O'Keefe are some of my favorite artists. They are people who I feel like broke outside of traditional like realism in their own ways and also love color. I love those people. I'm really inspired by a lot of illustrators, like a lot of children's book illustrators. I love the work of Oliver Jeffers. He's kind of like who got me into illustration because I used to be a preschool teacher and looking at his illustrations really inspired me and made me want to paint. He is an illustrator who has like a fine art practice. So that's kind of like what I want to do, I guess. I want to be a painter, but I also love making illustrations. And like in that vein, on the YouTube side, I really love Furry Little Peach, Sean, and then Lee Ellickson, Cheyenne Barton, Megan Wang, everyone on YouTube basically who's making videos. I'm really inspired by Jamie Green and Rebecca Green. I am members of their Patreon and I like consume everything that they post. I'm just like, how are you so cool? Yeah, basically everyone that I follow on Instagram. I'm really inspired by this artist, named Pat Perry. He has a fine art practice, but he also makes murals. And then I'm also inspired by an artist named Pace Taylor. I think the people that I look up to the most are really into color. You can tell that they love it a lot. Um, there's like a joyfulness to their work. They're all kind of inspired by similar things that I'm inspired by, like nature and mythology and creativity. Okay, next couple of questions are about art style. This person asks, did you consciously develop your art style or did it just come on its own? I think when I first started making work more consistently, I was really focused on art style and I really wanted to like have my own art style. I did think more consciously about it, but lately I've just been kind of resigned to the fact that no matter what I do, my work will look like it was made by me. I think you can see like my hand and my eye and everything that I do kind of no matter what. Yeah, I don't think about art style as much anymore. I do kind of think about like how my work fits together, what comes up for me over and over again as like personal symbols and then how I go about things. But I try to stay as intuitive as I possibly can about that kind of stuff. Like I don't have a color palette that I've consciously made my brand or like a way that I draw certain things. I know that some people do do that and I don't think that's wrong. I just am kind of rebellious by nature and would resist that if I set that up for myself. This person asks, how do you feel about your art style and how do you feel about possibly changing in the future? I feel very positively about positive 
possibly changing in the future. I think with every single piece, my art style changes a little tiny bit. I'm getting closer and closer and closer to making work that feels like the most authentic to me. I think that's just how it works and I don't think you ever arrive at a place. You're always evolving and changing. I like the work that I'm making. I'm making things that I'm proud of and that I'm happy with. That's all that I can do, I guess. Next question is, what is your favorite subject matter? Honestly, anything from nature. I love drawing birds, fish. Both of those things have like a limitless possibility to the variations that you can have within them. That's really inspiring to me, especially landscapes too, I guess. There is no end. You can't draw all of the birds. I guess you probably can, but there's so many. Okay, next question is, what's the difference between art and illustration in your opinion? For me, art is something that stands on its own. It doesn't need like an explanation or a story. And illustration is something that illuminates something else, whether that's like a story or an event or music. I think illustration goes with other forms of storytelling. I feel like I used to think like art is painting and illustration as drawing, but it's not really like that. I use the two kind of interchangeably. I also say that I'm an artist and illustrator because I feel like that opens me up to being hired by people and then also doing more commercial work. So I think of illustration as like the more commercial side of what I do. And then the art is more free flowing and open to interpretation. Next couple questions are about mediums. If you had to pick a medium to never use again, what would it be? And I think hands down, I have to say oil pastels. I don't know. I think they're fine. I like the way that I feel when I'm doing it. Like the physical feeling of like rubbing an oil pastel is fun, but I never really like how the finished thing looks. Maybe that means I should do it more. If I had to get rid of something, oil pastels. Sorry. Or maybe just graphite. But it seems silly to get rid of pencils. Like pencils seem important. Um, so I wouldn't just nix the pencils, but I don't really like drawing in graphite. Is there a new medium you would like to try? I would love to try oil painting. I've never oil painted before. I'm honestly kind of scared of it. I think that it might open up some new techniques for me. I kind of want to keep playing with acrylic for a while. I also have a ton of acrylic paint. Yeah, maybe like some fiber art. I have been getting into doing like visible mending stuff. I think that would be fun. This person asked, what's the first medium you used? I guess like in my life, probably crayons when I was a child. When I got kind of serious about trying to build my own art practice, I think watercolor is the first medium that I used. I think watercolor is a really good first medium to start out with because it teaches you how to like mix colors and teaches you to kind of like let go and the paint does a lot of the work for you. Yeah, some people hate watercolor. I think it's a fun one to start out with. Okay, the next section is about work slash business. What was it like to start your online shop? Taxes are scary. Taxes are scary, but you don't have to figure it out until it's time to do your taxes. Just start. That's what I did. And then I figured out my taxes later. I started out on Etsy. Etsy is really nice in some ways because they do collect and remit sales tax for you. So you don't have to do that yourself. You just have to report your income tax. The first year that I did my business, I was in school and I was doing other things. So I didn't make very much money and I was just on Etsy and Etsy made it easy, but there's a lot of fees involved. That's its own video. I'm not on Etsy anymore. I was selling polymer clay jewelry for a long time before I started my like art business. So I had a little bit of experience with like shipping things out and taking photos of stuff. I technically first started my online shop with one sticker, it's this little raccoon sticker. I'll see if I can find a photo of it, but I ordered 20 of them and then sold them. And then I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. And then I ordered like five sticker designs. And then I made one print and I made like 10 editions of one print. And I just very slowly added things over time. This person asks pricing, question mark, question mark, question mark. How the heck? And I agree, how the heck? I basically just see what other people are pricing things at. And then I do the same thing as them. And I don't think that's wrong. I think it's actually good. I also think about like what a fair price that I would pay for something. Pricing originals is really hard and really personal though. So I don't know that I have any advice for it. How did you start getting art gigs? I and mean, can you tell us more about your iPads, favorite drawing apps and brushes? I started getting art gigs somewhat recently. I think it has a lot to do with one, being on social media and posting that I am available for work and then two, doing low paid or sometimes free work for friends. I've made a couple of gig posters for 
friends, local businesses and stuff started reaching out to me. I also apply to a lot of things. I follow basically every arts organization in my city and apply to everything that applies to me. You kind of just gotta put yourself out there. As far as the iPad, I have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil and I just use Procreate. My favorite brushes, I use the Max Pack brushes, I use the 6B Pencil and I use the Studio Pen and the Technical Pen and some blending modes. But maybe I can make a video about that if you guys are interested. I feel so green in digital art. I feel a weird presenting myself as an authority of any kind on digital art. I just use Procreate. Okay, this person says, would like to know how old you are and how old you were when starting to earn a decent amount of money. Let's say one to live with. I am 29 years old. I am gonna be 30 in March. I was 28 years old when I started earning enough money to live with. I kind of had the privilege slash weird situation of not having a full-time job before I started doing this full-time. I was disabled by cancer treatment. So I was collecting disability and I was also very sick for three years. Having a romantic partner that I live with who is down to share expenses and cover me if anything bad happens. He's never had to cover me, but that is like a big safety net that I have. And that's a huge privilege that I have. I also have parents that love me and would never let me sleep on the street. They are not supporting me in any way, but if I needed them to, they would be able to, which is again, a huge privilege. That leads us into the next question, which is, what does your family think of your profession? I'm wanting to become a full-time artist, currently just doing it as a side gig, but I'm nervous about what my family and friends will think. I have a very supportive family. My parents are not artists or creatives at all. They both worked in like medical fields their whole lives. I think they respect the entrepreneurial hustle that goes into it. At times, I would say that they don't necessarily understand how it is that I'm making it work, but they trust me and I feel like I'm old enough now that I don't care <laughs> what they think or I just like don't care about what like distant family members or friends think. I also almost died like I said before I started doing this full time so there is an element of me just not giving a fuck. <laughs> So I think you have to channel that a little bit. If your friends judge you, you should get new friends. Think about like, who are you envisioning judging you? It's helpful to like name that person. For me, the person that I think of judging me is someone that I actually don't care about them or about their opinion. Just like some random person from high school. Don't worry about it. You can always block those people. This person asks, what do you enjoy the most about being an artist? Freedom. First of all, I love having the freedom to do whatever I want, whether that's like with my time or with the projects that I wanna take on, I can say no to anything that I want to say no to. The creative element of every other job that I've had has been like the strongest thing that I bring to the table. I think having that become my whole profession just feels really like self-actualizing and good to me. This person says, what key things do you think led you to be able to get consistent sales in your shop? Posting on social media, first of all, is really helpful. I think presenting yourself as like a person, not as a brand, helps people connect to you and want to buy the things that you make. People in general, myself included, are tired of being sold to and feeling like they are being marketed to all the time. I don't keep things very polished on social media and try to just do things in a more authentic way, not like authentic branding authentic, but just in a way that feels genuinely authentic to me. And I think that helps a lot. I also take people's feedback really seriously. And if people are asking for a certain thing, like people were asking for larger prints, I took that seriously and provided that. So if people are asking for prints of a certain artwork, you should listen to people and yeah. Have you ever thought about illustrating a children's book? Yes, I definitely have. At the beginning of this sort of journey, I was actually really focused on the idea of illustrating a children's book and becoming a children's book illustrator because I was a preschool teacher for so long. I felt like I was like perfect for it. And I do feel like my art style would suit a children's book. Right now, the idea of working on like a long-term project like that sounds daunting. I think one day I would love to illustrate a children's book. I don't think my portfolio right now reflects that. I do think that 
that, I would like to illustrate more like little characters. Uh, one of my favorite artists that I forgot to mention earlier is Carson Ellis, who is, I would say, a fine artist and a children's book illustrator. Her work is amazing. If you've never checked it out, you should. And I want to be like her when I grow up. Do you have long-term plans for your art career? I don't really have long-term plans for anything. In the future, I guess I imagine myself doing something similar to what I'm doing now. I do feel like right now I do a lot of marketing and social media and order fulfillment art market stuff. And I think in the future, I'd like to maybe step away from that and do a little bit more like art licensing, client projects in the future. I kind of think like at most a year ahead of time. You'll see, I guess. My favorite slash least favorite part of what I do. My favorite part of what I do is making the art. If I could paint and draw all day long and not do anything else I would, but I can't do that. Least favorite part of what I do is probably just like manage inventory and do all the like detail oriented side of things. If I could outsource that, I would. I like packing orders to an extent. I don't really like answering emails from people who are wondering where their package is. When things get lost in the mail, that's like most stressful part of what I do. This person asks, if you could change your art name, would you, or keep the little egg? I have thought about this a little bit. Sometimes like when I have to go to the bank and tell them my artist name or my business name is Little Tiny Egg, I feel a little silly. Yeah, I love Little Tiny Egg for now. I don't know, on YouTube, I have considered changing my name to my first and last name. My name is Kristen Vardenega, by the way, which both of those names are really easy to misspell and kind of hard to pronounce, which is the main reason why I didn't use that as my handle in the first place. Let me know what you guys think if I should stay little tiny egg. Maybe I'll change it one day to medium sized egg. I think that'd be funny. Next questions are about social media slash YouTube. This person asks, what is your stance on social media followers? Does it matter to have a large following to grow your business? Alternatively, how do you like to engage with people who support you? I am not going to pretend like social media followers are irrelevant, but there are plenty of artists who are more successful than me and more professional than me that have way less followers than I have. And I've built my following very slowly and not very intentionally. Like I never have a goal to grow my audience. The more eyeballs that you have on you, the more chances you have to sell things to those people. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the equation. I don't think there is like a number that you have to have in order to start your business. Like I think you can start your business with zero followers. It just might be a little slower. Yeah, I started posting my work on social media just because I wanted to share it beyond just like my friends and family, a very intuitive choice that was not tied to wanting to make money or wanting to have it be a business. I just was like, I want to show this off because I think it's cool. Maybe that's like egocentric. That's how it all started. And then people were like, can you make this into a print or can you make this into a sticker? And I kind of saw the opportunity there. I obviously have seen other people do it successfully, like everyone on YouTube who does the same kind of thing, who run their Patreon and have online shops and stuff. I think social media is important, but I don't think it's the end all be all. There's plenty of people who have very, very small followings who are professional artists. So don't let that discourage you. Also, I started my art account in 2020 with zero followers. I think I have like 35K on Instagram right now and not that many on YouTube. There's only like 8,000 of us right now. So if you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. But numbers don't matter so you don't have to. Do you have any tips for other artists wanting to follow a similar career path? I think my main tip would be just to like stay authentic to yourself and don't try to copy what other people are doing. I think there's like a temptation to do the exact same thing that you've seen work for other people. There's just like no right answer or no one way to do things. And I think that's the most exciting part about this job is that there's as many ways to do it as there are people who want to do it. Partially, you have to give up the idea of making exactly what you want to make and think a little bit about what people want to buy. Just really consider if that would be beneficial to your art practice. I think like some people might start trying to make it into a business too early. Really fall in love with your art first and don't try to force it would be my advice. This person asks, how do you make the leap to being a full-time artist? Did having a big following help? I don't consider myself someone with a big following, but but when I first started doing it full-time, I had like 10,000 followers. Not that many actually. Um, I didn't have to quit a job, which I think is really 
a big part of like what is hard. And I think that if I had a job that was good and had benefits and that I didn't hate, I wouldn't have made the leap. I basically just couldn't find a job that appealed to me and was making a little bit of money as an artist and just decided to commit a full-time amount of effort into it. I know that some of my other friends who are full-time artists took on some debt or like did sort of the like leap thing and gave themselves a couple of months to work full-time on their art business and before they started making money. There's no right answer, I guess. I didn't have that many followers when I first started and the followers will come if you make work that speaks to other people. This person asks, how do you manage your time between personal life, social life, running a shop, and your YouTube channel? I basically don't. <laughs> Um, I just do what seems important to me each day and stuff gets done. I make to-do lists and I cross things off my to-do list. I try to see friends like a couple times a week and sometimes I don't make that happen, especially with being kind of chronically ill. Sometimes there's weeks where I like don't see anybody. I just kind of like do what is the most important thing to do first, whatever is the most time sensitive for my business, which usually is getting orders out and answering emails. I have only been in the studio for a couple of months, but I'm slowly getting into a routine with things and I'm excited to get into more of a routine. So maybe in the future, I'll have a better answer to that question. At the beginning of this year, I did make a video about my planner and how I use like my notebooks to keep track of stuff. So I'll link that in the little thing up there. This person says, did you expect to land where you are today? What parts of your current life surprise you the most and how much do you attribute to hard work or luck? I think it is 50% work and 50% luck. <laughs> um, that's my scientific answer to that question. And when I graduated from high school, I declared my major as graphic design. I mainly did that because I wanted to be in charge of my schedule. And I thought that if I was a freelance graphic designer, I could play when I wanna play and work when I wanna work. It's funny to think back on that, like kind of naive 18 year old idea of what my life would be like. Even though I'm not a designer, I'm more of an artist that has kind of come true in a weird way. So a lot to say about like manifestation versus just kind of like working on something because you believe it could happen. I'm surprised and happy that this first year of being a full-time artist, I have been able to make it work. And I think I've had really low expectations, but lofty goals, low expectations, high fantasies is how I got here, I guess. Also probably a lot of luck. Next question is, what do you edit your videos on? Currently using iMovie and would love to know what others do. I also use iMovie, uh, believe it or not. How else would I get cool effects like this? I downloaded DaVinci Resolve recently and I might try to see how that goes. I feel comfortable in iMovie and it works for what I use it for. So I'll probably keep using it for a while, but if you have recommendations, please let me know. Tips for filming and creating videos or how did you start your YouTube channel? I started my YouTube channel with like a couple of sketchbook tours a long time ago. I posted like one sketchbook tour every six months and had like 300 subscribers for a long time. I think a lot of people that I see following the script of what they think a studio vlog should be. And I'm trying to be a little more creative. Lately, I've been doing more like focused vlogs where I'm like, I'm gonna film what I do in a week instead of just like filming random clips throughout a month and then trying to find a way to fit them logically together at the end. My main tip is just to start, make one video and see how it goes and then keep making videos. And remember that it's not a linear path. Like you'll probably go up and down in views. Um, I've definitely gone up and way down and way up and way down. I like making videos. Like it's fun for me. The editing process isn't always fun. Like it takes up a lot of time. I like doing it. So if you like it, check out my other videos. Some of them are good. Some of them are not as good. The last couple of questions are just life slash personal questions. First one is, how did you get Nora? Nora is my cat. She is the love of my life and my little best friend. And I wish that I could take her into the studio and I'm kind of scheming to see like if there's a way that I can get her in here because I think it would be really fun to have her here. Um, we got her when she was a kitten. We got her in the summer of 2020. So sort of mid pandemic. And we got her from a shelter in Livingston, Montana. She was just this little gray ball of fluff at the very beginning and she was so stinking cute. And we named her Nora Jones because Taylor, my partner, and I like somewhat ironically love Nora Jones, and we just thought that would be a sweet name for her. She is a little bit sad now that I'm at the studio every day. When we first got her, I was in online school full time, and 
Taylor was working from home, so we spent a ton of time with her. So she definitely has like that pandemic kitty clinginess. And we're kind of considering getting another cat. I wish we would have gotten two kittens from the very beginning, but we don't really have like a good space to quarantine them. We live in a pretty small one bedroom apartment. So I don't know, we might get another cat. I really want to, but we'll see. How did you and your partner meet? My partner's name is Taylor. He is my partner <laughs> and my best friend and I love him. And we met at the climbing gym when we were both living in Montana. A mutual friend introduced us and we were friends for a long time. We were both dating other people. Then when we both were single, we were like, should we do this? And it's been a fun time ever since. When we first met, he was a arborist. So he was using his rock climbing skills to climb trees and cut their branches off. And then he worked as a copywriter during COVID. And now he is a librarian and a jazz DJ. He loves jazz. He introduces me to all kinds of cool music. Hi, Taylor. If you're watching this, I love you. What is your favorite season and weather? Late spring or early summer, so like May and June. I love when the dirt is all wet and smelly and it's like rainy every once in a while, but the flowers are popping out. Best season. Um, I also really like fall and I don't mind winter. I hate summer. I don't like being hot. I don't hate summer. I just, it's not my favorite season. What is your favorite flower? Um, I really love wildflowers, love shooting stars and columbines. What is your favorite bird? Is so hard because I love so many different birds. Honestly, I love love chickadees. They're so cute. It's like I love little songbirds, like little titmice. But my favorite bird is probably either a great blue heron or a sandhill crane. It's just so fun to see them in the wild and they are like actual dinosaurs. They're so cool. What's your favorite color and your most hated color? My favorite color right now is probably this like chartreuse green or like a light lilac purple. My most hated color, just like an emerald green, like a true green. I feel like I can never get it to look good. Like a dull red. I love a poppy red. My favorite music, I'll link my Spotify down below if you guys wanna follow me on Spotify. But lately I have been listening to a lot of Big Thief and folk music in general. I love listening to music. I listen to music all day long while I'm working. And if you have any music recommendations, please let me know. My favorite movie or my favorite anime. Um, I don't know if it counts as anime, but I'm watching Scavenger's Reign right now on HBO and it's really cool. I saw someone describe it as Mobius meets Ghibli, and it's definitely that. It's really cool. It's like sci-fi, um, but kind of solar punk optimistic at the same time. Um, my favorite movie is probably either Mad Max Fury Road or Pride and Prejudice. Okay, that's all the questions. If there's something that I didn't answer that you would really like to know, just ask it in the comments and I'll try to answer it in a future video. If you like this kind of podcast style video, I have a podcast newsletter that I post on Patreon every month, just talking about like stuff I'm enjoying and stuff I'm inspired by and what I've been up to. So if you like this kind of longer talking video, you might be into that. I also send out monthly sticker and postcard on my Patreon. Shop is up right now and that's it. I hope you have a really good day. If you like the video, like it or leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one.